Hello students. So this lecture is in continuation to the previous lecture and in that we have discussed how we can implement filters in Z domain or using Z transform and in that we have discussed two different types of questions. Uh, one was when the input and impulse response is given and we have to find the output of the filter and other was the equation describing the system was given and we have to find the transfer function or impulse response of the system. So in continuation to the same, today we will discuss some more problems related to the filtering in Z domain. So you can see now the first question it is in that we have to determine the output of the filter and we are given with the digital input sequence as you can see we are given with four coefficients of input that is minus one, one, zero and minus one. So this is a input sequence given to us and also we are given with equation which is used to represent the system or we can say filter which is given as yn is equal to 0.2 xn minus 0.5 x of n minus 2 plus 0.4 x of n minus 3. So this is the output equation given which is describing the system and also we are given with the input sequence. Now we have to determine the output with respect to this input. Okay, this is general equation which is given describing the system and now we are not given with the system or we can say impulse response of the system but what is given now we have to find the output corresponding to this particular input. So how you can get this or how you can solve this equation. So now you can see again this equation number one which is describing this system or filter. Now what is our first step? First step is again we have to determine the transfer function of this. So already we have discussed we can find in two ways. One is you can keep xn as delta n and find hn and from that hn we can find out hz or the other way is directly go for z transform of this equation number one. So let's do by a second method. So what we are doing is we are determining the transfer function hz by taking z transform on both the sides of this equation. So what you will get yz is equal to 0.2 what will be the z transform of xn that is xz then minus 0.5. Now we have x of n minus 2 if you see there is no term x of n minus 1 directly we are having two delays. So it will be z raised to power minus 2 xz. So we'll get minus 0.5 z raised to power minus 2 xz and similarly other term that is 0.5 z raised to power minus 3 xz. So this is the equation of yz. Now what is the next step? We have to take xz common. You just take xz common and then take xz on the other side. What we will get? hz that is yz by xz which is equal to 0.2 minus 0.5 z raised to power minus 2 plus 0.4 z raised to power minus 3. So this determines the transfer function of the system. So we get the transfer function. But what is our motive? Our motive is to find the output if a particular input sequence is given. So what is xn given to us? It is given to us as minus 1, 1, 0, 1. So now we can calculate xz from this. So xz will be minus 1 plus z inverse minus z inverse 3. So this is xz which is equal to minus 1 because this is the first term corresponding to n equal to 0. Then we have for n equal to 1 we have 1 so it is 1 into z inverse 
Now you can see for n equal to 2 we don't have any term that is 0 so it is z minus 2 is not coming and for n equal to 3 we are having 1 so it is 1 into z raised to power minus 3. So we get xz as minus 1 plus z inverse minus z inverse 3 so this is xz. Now we got xz we got hz the other is we have to obtain yz which is xz into hz. So we will multiply this terms. Finally yz by yz is nothing but xz into hz. So on multiplying these two terms we will get this equation which is minus 0.2 plus 0.2z inverse plus 0.5z inverse 2 minus 1.1z inverse 3 plus 0.4 z inverse 4 plus 0.5 z inverse 5 minus 0.4 z raised to power minus 6. So this will get yz. Now how we can obtain yn? Because our motive is to find the output. So by taking the inverse of this equation yz we can get yn. So yn will be by taking the inverse of this equation inverse z transform you will get the coefficients you can see from yz it is minus 0.2 means that corresponds to the value of yn at n equal to 0. Similarly at n equal to 1 because it is z minus 1 you will get 0.2. Similarly at n equal to 2 you will get 0.5 then minus 1.1 then 0.4 then 0.5 and minus 0.4. So these are the corresponding digital output values or we can say digital output sequence y n. So have you understood this? Now let's see one more question in that what we have to do is we have to calculate the magnitude and phase response. So how you can calculate the magnitude and phase response? For that we need frequency response. So for that we should know what is the relation between the z transform and the Fourier transform. So let's see how we can do so what is given to us is we are given with again a filter equation or we can say the equation of a filter it is given as yn equal to 1 by 6 xn plus 1 by 3 x of n minus 1 plus 1 by 6 x of n minus 2. So this is a system equation given to us which is describing a particular filter. Now to determine the magnitude and phase response first we have to calculate its z transform then we will keep z in terms of frequency and then we will calculate the magnitude and phase response. So how you can obtain the z transform in the same manner you have to get first you have to get the transfer function. So to calculate transfer function again take z transform on both the sides you will get yz is equal to 1 by 6 xz plus 1 by 3 z inverse xz plus 1 by 6 z inverse 2 xz. Then again what we have to do is we have to take xz common taking on the other side then we will get yz by xz that is nothing but hz that is the transfer function of the system. So you will get 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3 z inverse plus 1 by 6 z inverse 2. So this we have obtained now the transfer function of the system or filter. Now what is the next step because we have to calculate the magnitude and phase response. So next step is how we can change this hz equation into frequency terms means because we are considering digital filter so we will talk about frequency in digital domain that is omega. So we know the relation between z and e raised to that is omega. So it is z is equal to e raised to power g omega considering that sampling time interval is 1 second. So we are keeping z as e raised to power g omega in this equation. So if you substitute this z as e omega e raised to power g omega in this equation you will get the equation of this kind h of e raised to power g omega that is 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3 
t raised to power minus j omega because that was z raised to power minus 1. So it will give us e raised to power minus j omega plus 1 by 6 e raised to power minus j 2 omega. Now a little bit we will uh, keep this equation in some different form to just find out the magnitude and phase response. So how you can do? So first what we will do is we will take this 1 by 6 common. So you will get 1 plus 2 e raised to power minus j omega plus e raised to power minus j 2 omega. Now the next step is because we have to try always to use the identity of cos omega and sin omega that is cos omega is e raised to power j omega plus e raised to power minus j omega by 2. Similarly we have another identity for sin that is sin omega is e raised to power j omega by omega minus e raised to power minus j omega by 2 iota or 2 j. So we will use that identity. So how we will use? We will take e raised to power minus j omega common if you see. Now we have taken e raised to power minus j omega common. So it will be in internal product you will get e raised to power j omega plus 2 plus e raised to power minus j omega and what we are doing is we are multiplying and divide by 2 to make the formula of cos to this term e raised to power j omega and e raised to power minus j omega. So combining the, these two terms multiplying and divide by 2 and then finally taking the two common. So you will get this equation. So now we can keep this as cos omega. So you will get this equation 1 by 3 e raised to power minus j omega into in bracket you will have now cos omega plus 1 because this equation now it gives the formula of cos omega. So we have used the identity, we kept cos omega and you will get this is nothing but h e raised to power j omega that we call it as frequency response of the filter or spectral analysis of the filter. So now from this frequency response, equation of this frequency response, we have to find out the magnitude response and the phase response. So how you will calculate the magnitude we know that is real part square plus imaginary part square under root or otherwise if you remember the filtering equation so the value of frequency or we can say angle in the power of e with j so that represents phase and the remaining term will represent the magnitude so you can give directly also for this what will be the magnitude now it is 1 by 3 into whole cos omega plus 1 so this is magnitude of that filter and this value in e power with j that is your minus omega that is angle or we can say the phase response of the filter. So this is how we can determine the phase response of the phase response and magnitude response of the filter. Okay so what are just revise the steps what we have to do is if any of the filter is given in time domain so first step is you have to get it into z domain so by taking z transform calculating the transfer function then after obtaining the transfer function what was the next step we have to replace z as e raised to power j omega because that is the relation between we can say z transform and the Fourier transform so by keeping z as e raised to power j omega you will get the equation of frequency response of the filter that is h e raised to power j omega and then from that equation, equation of frequency response, you will calculate the magnitude response that is under root of real part square plus imaginary part square and then from that we can also calculate the phase response that is nothing but tangent inverse of imaginary part by the real part. From that you can solve the equation and you will get the magnitude and phase response of the filter. So this was all in this lecture. Thank you so much.